My name is Gavin Evans, and this is my review of Transformers The Last Night, and this review will have spoilers, so there's your warning. But I know everybody despises this movie, like even I did when I first saw it in 2017, but on this latest rewatch, I am kind of surprised at how much I didn't mind it. I don't know if I'd go as far to recommend it or say that I liked it, but I didn't hate it, that's for certain. So let's begin talking about the cast. And Mark Wahlberg, I think, does a perfectly fine job here. He has more to do in this one than he did in the last movie, and I think he brings enough personality here. Isabella Mono, I think, is a very underrated actress, and she manages to stand out. She brings plenty of personality to her character, and I came to care for her. And I liked the dynamic of these two characters. I thought it was a nice addition. Also, Mark Wahlberg and Isabel Mono were also in Instant Family together in 2018, which is a fantastic movie. Definitely recommend it, but they did a good job in this movie as well. Laura Haddock, I thought, did a perfectly fine ish job like she looks good she's charming enough is she super convincing though eh, not really I didn't really buy the relationship that formed with her and Mark Wahlberg it felt very forced but whatever it was a good attempt Anthony Hopkins, I don't know if he's just sleepwalking through this movie, but he's still a very entertaining presence to have. I still enjoyed what we got from him here. Josh Dumont, it's nice to see him again, and I think he does a fine job. I wish he had a bit more to do. Stanley Tucci, John Totoro, and Tony Hill all give perfectly fine performances. They bring enough personality when they're on screen, but I wish we got more of them, to be honest. Um, Peter Cullen continues to do a good job as Optimus. He just nails the wall. Frank Welker, I think, is very lacking here, and I'll talk more about that when I talk about Megatron. John Goodman and Steve Buscemi are in this movie together, which is pretty crazy, to be honest, but, I mean, I guess they do a fine job. I thought Jim Carter was the Transformer to stand out here. He's a little cringe at first, but he eventually won me over. So, yes, the cast is a bit of a mixed bag, but for the most part, it works enough. The story is another mixed bag because I actually do think it's more focused than Age of Extinction. Like, yes, there's still a lot going on, there's still plenty of characters, but it never felt like it lost sight of what the movie was really about. So I do appreciate that. It's easier to follow along than the last movie. But, that said, it is still more of the same. In the first movie, though after the Ospark, then the Matrix, then the Pillars, then the Seed, and now the Staff. It would be nice if they could come up with literally any other plot besides a... A, a shit! What's it called when, like, everyone in a movie is after something? A MacGuffin? Yeah, that sounds right. But anyways, more of the same. The idea of turning Optimus evil is actually great. And for, like, two minutes, it's very entertaining. But then he turns good again, just like that. 
So it kind of feels like they wasted that idea. I do like Quintessa as the villain. I thought she brought a unique presence to this movie. She was able to be menacing. I think she's played by Gemma Chan, so, so she did a good job. But let's talk about Megatron and just how he's so terribly written. Like, in the first two movies, he still has enough personality. And in the third movie, I do think he's well written. But man, these last two, like, they just destroy his character. He's just a big ol' nothing generic villain, and that's a real shame. And then we also get this backstory where the Transformers have been around for centuries. They were there with King Arthur and Merlin, and they were there during World War II. <laughs> And I am of mixed opinion because it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> like, it is so stupid and so goofy, but I can't help but enjoy that. <laughs> like, even the fact that the talisman turns into Excalibur is so cheesy, but I kind of like it. But at the same time, the mythology behind these movies now is just a convoluted mess. Like, I much preferred it in the first movie, where the Osbok came to Earth, Megatron followed, they both fought, and then the Autobots came to Earth for the first time. That is what I prefer. And I could... Excuse it in the second movie and the third movie, but now, I don't know, I feel like we've just kind of jumped the shark, so I, I don't know what to think about this, really. Um, but yeah, but anyways, um, let's talk about the main reason why I'm a bit more positive on this one, and it's what these five movies have in common, and it's Michael Bay, but... I feel like his direction really does stand out here. Like, he finds a way to make this movie feel epic. It is huge in every way. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't fully locked in because of the pure spectacle on display. You know, like, there's a section where they go underwater, which is just stunning, by the way. And from that point on until the end, I was really entertained. Like, the movie progressively gets better, and the visual effects still look great. The production design can be great. The sound is great. And, I don't know, maybe it's because right now we're getting so many movies that look like trash. Like Ant-Man 3, The Little Mermaid remake, Deadpool and Wolverine. Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire. And then you watch this movie and there's a real vision on display. It captures scale and scope ever so perfectly. And it just allows this movie to stand out. There is some cool action bits. My favorite is like a five second scene where Mark Wahlberg jumps off a building onto one Transformer, two Transformers, and then grabs onto the third one. That was very entertaining. There was a section where these huge pieces of land are being lifted up. The underwater stuff, like I said, that's really great. Uh, there was a car chase where Bumblebee half transforms during it, which looks really cool. So it does have its moments. The humor! Shit, I kind of hate that these movies can make me laugh. Like, there's a bit where Anthony Hopkins is explaining all this stuff to Mark Wahlberg and Lil Haddock. And the robot is playing the organ and he's doing opera music to make it sound more epic. And it's a little cringe, but it's also a little funny. So... Yeah, uh, my big issue with the movie's direction, though, is the aspect ratio. 
Look, I love it when I get a movie on Blu-ray and it changes aspect ratio during the big action scenes. Christopher Nolan does it ever so perfectly and I like how it can make this movie feel even bigger, but holy shit, pick an aspect ratio for a scene and stick with it. It is constantly changing from big and epic to widescreen, to big and epic to widescreen, to big and epic to widescreen, and there's no purpose to any of it. Like, I, I don't know what Michael Bay was thinking there. In fact, it's very distracting just watching do 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 Like, if it happens during every other scene, fine. You're engaged in the scene. But like 20 times in one minute takes me right out of the movie. So, uh, Transformers The Last Night. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a good movie and it, it is too long. Absolutely. The story is more of the same, it's kind of convoluted nonsense, but there's still some really entertaining goofy stuff. Michael Bay delivers on the spectacle and he makes it feel epic. Some of the cast memo members kept me engaged and got me to care for them, and I don't know, it's just one giant mixed bag. Would I watch it again? I think I would if I'm being honest. So I gotta give Transformers The Last Night a 5.5 out of 10. I like it when movies have a vision. I do, and I think this movie looks so much better than a bunch of the shit we get nowadays. So Transformers The Last Night, have you seen it? What did you like? What did you think about it? And what did you like about it? Be positive. Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos soon. And Gavin, out.